Hello, everybody. Hi. How are you? It's great to be here again. It's great to have you. And yeah, welcome back to the Lionscapes channel. Yeah, welcome. So, today is another um, creative Monday. Last week it fell out, but we're back with you today. So, Sonia, what are we going to do today? Yeah, so today we're going to draw a watercolor landscape. Mm -hmm. um, which is going to be very suiting for, for this time of the day, especially for us, since it's already evening here. Um, but I hope you're going to enjoy it as well. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm looking forward to your watercolors. I always enjoy uh, watching you paint. Yeah, thank you. All right, so what should people prepare? Um, what you need to prepare are some watercolors. This is the essential part. Mm -hmm. Then you also need a few, a few of the brushes. I have different sizes here, you so top down. No, no, because the music is going to activate, and I want to try it out. All right, if it works. Um, yeah. Okay. So brushes, different sizes. I can later on show you what kind I'm using as well. Um, yeah. I also have some watercolors in tubes. Uh, I'm. I started playing around with them a bit. Uh, some masking tape, uh, some paper towels, two glasses of water. In case you get thirsty and in case you get more thirsty. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I can explain you also later on what, why do we need two cups of water. Um, some paper, preferably something thicker, something that you can use as a water uh, watercolor paper. So that's usually 300 grams plus. Um, and a plate would be awesome. I forget to bring mine, but uh, yeah, maybe we can arrange something. Maybe I on. can fetch it. Okay. Yeah. So, what are we going to be painting today? We're going to be painting a landscape uh, or a view of a city. All right. Yeah. So, we're going to show you right away what it is. But before that, we also wanted to tell you that today is a special live stream for us mm -hmm. um, because we're very, very excited to share a little bit of news with you. Yeah. So, stay tuned to the end of the video. We have some news announcements for you. It's about our channel, it's about Future of Landscapes, and yeah, it's about supporting you even better. Mm -hmm. on your creative journey. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's look at the top down and um, yeah, do tell me where you're tuning in from today. There's a lot of people tuning in today and I hope you are ready and give us uh, also a nod if you are uh, ready to roll, to roll. Okay, I'm gonna just put my hair up so I can draw a bit better. All right, so we got Suhar, we got Maria, we got we got Phil, we got Megan, we got Ruchita. Oh, it's so nice to see you people. Um, Goranshi, Isidor, Polo, uh, Rigo is here. Um, then we have uh, Wendy. Oh, nice to see you again, Wendy. This is amazing. Uh, Emmanuel is here again, and um, yeah, it's great that you guys are a community, you know each other, we have a feeling we know you, and this is like one of the best things. So, yeah, glad to have you. Okay, very nice to, to see you all again here. So, I hope we're gonna do something amazing today. Um, if you want, you can also prepare some sort of black pen or a pencil because I was thinking later on when I'm done with coloring in everything with watercolors, if I'm not happy still with my painting, I'm, try, I'm gonna try to add some dark spots or some details with, with a pen. You can also do it with an ink pen or something similar. So I'm just preparing my paper those are the two. I prepared two of the papers because uh, I'm gonna try to mix my own colors today. Um, I'm gonna play a bit with uh, with those basic three colors, which is uh, cyan, magenta and yellow. Which are the basic 
This is the basic color triad if you have known. It's the, not red, blue, it's magenta, yeah. cyan and yellow. The primary ones. And then I also have something very, very dark, which is pines gray uh, and also some tones for nature. Every time when you go to a web page or to another YouTube channel about watercolors, they always talk about yellow orange and burnt sienna. So of course I needed to buy to go and buy those two as well. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do uh, something today with those colors, but of course I also prepared my typical schminke colors, which are very, very loved. Um, yeah, so bring your own and don't be ashamed. Um, the the messier they look like, usually that means that they they are very much loved. The messier, the better. Those are actually my watercolors from the beginning of my studies. I remember I bought them in my first semester and I've stuck to them every day since. Okay, so I also stuck up on my uh, on my brushes supply. So I have here uh, some Da Vinci pens in size 4 and 6. Uh, the edition is Nova Synthetic. And then I also have the By Dynasty uh, for, for Collins, Kolinsky. So uh, also synthetic hair. Yeah, if um, we're, you know, as always, we're open to corrections, grammatical and phonetical, so... But phonetical, yeah. it's a bit uh, harder, right? Right, for, for everyone. <laughs> it's hard for you to correct us phonetically. You can try, you can like write it, you know, how it should uh, pronounce it, maybe in that yeah. funny way that this stuff is written. I don't know. Yeah, so this this one should be fake squirrel hair, so... Fake squirrel hair. Okay. So it's like a squirrel, but it's a fake squirrel. It's not a true squirrel. It's a total fake. Yeah. Just... Okay, so... Um... I'm gonna use today the whole page. I'm not gonna be afraid of of uh, a lot of paper, and I'm gonna use the A3 size. And first, I'm gonna use the masking tape. And be careful when you're using the masking tape. It's very sticky and it can really damage the the paper. So I suggest that you just stick it a few times on the table on the surface where you're working on, or maybe also on your trousers or somewhere, so that you just, yeah. Remove some of that stickiness. Sticking. Yeah. So if people don't have like a masking tape, what can they use instead? Um, Would like a cello tape work? No, 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 definitely not. Please don't use the cello tape or <laughs> something similar. No? Or duct tape or something. No, don't use duct tape. Because no. you're gonna just destroy your paper. <laughs> duct tape your your paper onto your table and leave that there forever. Yeah. And who calls it Jesus tape? I don't know. Germans, right? If I recall correctly. They call it Jesus tape? Yeah, I think that the Germans call it. Oh no, I cannot draw through the whole um, on the whole page, right? Because I'm limited with the frame. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. I get it. Okay, so I'm limited. That's my... That's your drawing area. That's my drawing area. Okay, can you give me a, another pen so I can limit myself a bit yeah. further? Here? Yeah. Uh, or what? Pencil would be better. Something Pencil better. would be better. Better. Yeah, but we... Where's that? Like, we have here all the like, tons of pens and everything. There. Oh, there is one. But like when you look for a pencil or for a um, pencil sharpener, you never find a pencil yeah. sharpener. And They're here, like, here's one. Okay. I think we have in all of this creative corner, we have just one pencil sharpener that just we just recently bought, and up until now we had no pencil sharpeners, and kind of managed to live with that. <laughs> you know. Okay. So, um, yeah, we already have. Um, some questions coming in, but I will give you a sneak peek while Sonia is gluing that into what are we going to draw today. Is yeah, that okay? Yeah, sure. Do that. Let's look at it. Do that. So, boom. Beautiful. Okay. Sonia, where is that? Uh, I think I'm going to ask that uh, question to our community. This is the award-winning question. Where is that? First of all, the location and then the name. Yeah, so I'm sure some people are from that country, I would say. I know someone is. I know I already seen one of you in the in the, in, the, in the comments. So, all right, it's coming in. So, they say Mont Saint-Michel, Saint-Malo, France. So, 
This is correct. Mont Saint Michel, I know it, and under the name of Mont Saint Michel, I know it's in France. Is Saint Malo also the name? Okay, Emmanuel said Mont Saint Michel, of course. Emmanuel, I was thinking about you. I know you are from France, so you are from France, right? I think you're from France. I think you said you're from France. And um, yeah, I trust you on that one, of course, but I trust the rest of you as well. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Maria is scared to paint that now. Um, that's okay. Sonia will take you step by step through it. It's not going to be complicated. It's going to be rather relaxing. Um, then, yeah, we have um, also a question here by Suhar. Does watercolor brand really matter, Sonia? Uh, when starting out, no. You should, the brand should not prevent you from starting out uh, doing anything. So yeah. whatever kind of technique are you using, you should just start drawing. But at one particular point, you when you get used to the to the brush and how the water reacts in combination to pigments, then you will notice notice that some colors react and behave differently on different papers or with different brush, um, or yeah, just if you're using different different pigments or colors. So at one point, it's always good to invest in better colors. There are three grades of colors. One is the school version yeah, for the for the for the children that play with colors and get to know the medium. The second one is the student version. This one is usually I also have it here. Um, Again checking the magic. You see Doors. that kind the smaller versions one you see, okay, um, I, I, I'm trying to be <laughs> creative, <laughs> but, um, but those smaller sets from better brands that usually provide you with very small boxes. Um, those are the student versions usually. Van Gogh is pro is one of my favorites, uh, favorites, and this one from Dollar Rowley is also very nice. Ronnie, yeah. Ronnie. It's also very nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have the third version, which is the professional one. And this is the Schminke, for example. Or one very good one is also Rubens. This one I also tried before. So um, that's something that I can recommend. And you can all already, you can see it in the, in the distinction in the price. That's something you can recognize immediately. Um, so yeah buy something that you can afford and just enjoy because what's most important with watercolors is that you develop a, a feeling how to use water uh, with pigment how to mix colors uh, so if you start with that i think you're good off mm -hmm. you, that's that's a good start so um we got a small question here by emmanuel is it better to use a big or a small paper size like a4 or a5 um, I would say it depends on your brush size. So, for example, I have here this one. This one is pretty big. So, I could easily do a A3 size paper. I could paint on it because I can do huge surfaces relatively quick. But if you have brushes like this one, if you compare it with this one, and you would like to use it for, for painting on a free size paper then i would say it will take you too long and you're just gonna you know the goal or the vision of the re end result is gonna be much further away because through the process you just won't have any fun painting um, but it also depends how do you paint i like to paint fast and then take my time for the details so um, this is sometime, something that you just figure out with time for yourself. So, um, yeah, I would say try everything. Start with smaller canvases um, or with bigger one, but don't be too precise. Okay, so I would also suggest that we start and um, let's start with just doing some outlines, some basic lines, uh, which will be there to just give us some, some feeling what, you know, 
some outlines for the surfaces, what, what we always teach. So I will blend in real fast the whole image again, so you can take a screenshot if you want it in a bigger size, um, or you can memorize it with your perfect photographic memory, you know, like you do. And um, now I'm gonna, yeah, I hope you screenshotted that. So <laughs> now we can go back to the small one and you always have it visible on the side, so. Yeah, great. Okay, can you, can you guys show me the, the bigger picture so that yes. I can see it for myself? Okay. Yes, so let's start. Oh, I'm enjoying it already. Um, so first of all, we, we're gonna start with just setting the horizon line. This this one is lies on the third of the of our of our page, and this is approximately the line. Um, try to not to use like very strong strokes like this. Try to keep the the hand light because you don't want those lines to be visible. Wait, you yeah. don't want these lines to be visible uh, later on. You know. It needs to disappear under the, the pigment. Okay, and then we're gonna just start adding lines for the castle, uh, for the for the city, and um, and some some lines for the for the trenches. So we got a small question that's interesting and relevant for everyone by Maria. Mm -hmm. And does the rule of thirds apply here as well? Yeah, Gaspar, I think I can leave you with the rule of thirds. It's my favorite thing to explain. Yeah, for I've sure. memorized it and I can tell you. Yeah, if you try to apply rule of thirds everywhere you can. What's the rule of thirds? I hear you ask. Um, I can gladly tell you. So, it's, the, the, it's, it's a simplification of the golden ratio. It's a way you position your elements on a page or a surface or in space that uh, will yield a pleasing and harmonious result. So what you do is, basically, it's really simple. You divide your page horizontally and vertically into equal thirds. Right? So three horizontal equal thirds, three vertical equal thirds. And then, when drawing landscapes or painting landscapes, you will put your horizon on the either bottom or the top third, horizontal third, and you will place your focal point, like point of interest, on one of the four intersections. And here you can see in this image, the photographer used this trick already. We see that the horizon is on the upper third and that uh, the, the monastery, Mont Saint-Michel, I think it's a monastery, probably a monastery? I guess it's a monastery. It's placed on a top right intersection of those thirds. So I hope this answers your question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um... That's why I also picked this this view because it's very uh, very dramatic and it's very balanced. We don't need to deal with with composition. It's it's preset for us. And you can also see, for example, I positioned the 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 island here, and then we have some guidelines for the for the roads. And the roads do really really tend to to emphasize the thirds. For example. This curve here goes till here, and then it also goes back to the to the first third, to the lower third, and then goes down. It's amazing how this, you know, this, uh, I don't know what it is, it's like a, um, a pile of, I don't know how you call this, but it's like a dam, maybe it's a dam, I guess it's a dam. Um, it leads the eye towards the towards um, the focal point, which is this mountain. So it's really beautiful composition. Well thought through. Okay, so we have two lines. Maybe I can add here in the foreground. There's like a a pile, and then there's another one here. Okay. Do you still need a plate? Yeah. Okay. I, I I'm gonna get plate. Sonia a plate. So I'm going to leave you with her a moment. Okay. Thank you, Gasper. Very nice of you. Okay. So as you see, we have two lines. We have the, some dark lines, for example, for this part, the stones on one side, and then we have the reflection part. And this is also something that we can, that we can emphasize or draw. 
Okay, good. Okay, and now maybe, okay, so I think that's it, basically, the lines that we needed. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's observe for just a moment and see what's going on here in this uh, in this photo so that we can later on better structure our drawing. So we have in background we have this island or let's call it a city. We have this this beautiful landmark in the background. Behind it it's it's a, we can see the sky and this sky has some clouds. Mm -hmm. They are very long without great details. Basically we have just one color. They're just lines, yeah. Yeah. And then we have like grayish blue in the left upper corner and it has like a gradient in the direction of of the of of, of the landmark. And it goes from orange, reddish, yellow in in the in the direction to the to the horizon where the line or the clouds in the background i can i'm not sure is this is there a city in the background i think it's or like a the landscape? coast the i think coast? it's the coast okay yeah. it's the coast so we can see the coast in the background so that means that i need to add another line for the for the coast and just do it very very gently because we don't want to push it too much and then we have the reflection, which is going to be positioned here somewhere, like this. We just need to watch out that the that the pointy parts are the same and that then the shape language speaks the same form so that we don't forget what's it all about. Okay. Yeah, and then we have some stones in the foreground. And um we, we can that means that we can draw in segments. So that's why I would first of all suggest that we start with the parts that are separated. And this is for example first the, the sky part where we will use the gradient between yellow and orange. And then we will <clears throat> and then we will do the water parts and maybe some lines that can be just merged with color in the lower part and then starting the base color for the for the for the what are, what are those uh, we call it dikes trenches dike dam dams i guess and then uh, we're going to just try to to build up the color okay so first of all um, i will use for for the upper part and for this part i'm going to use wet on wet technique that means we're going to use a bit more water um, as, first of all, as we're just going to wet the, the surface and then we're going to, and then we're going to start applying the color. Ah, okay. What we can do first as well is to prepare the colors that we're going to use. So not that you, it's, it's like if you if you have good structure at the beginning, but before you start drawing, then you Later on, don't focus so much on the things where they are. I always try to think about where do I put my paints down. Um, I think it's always interesting to see how you do that. Because you organize your plate of paints so neatly. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so uh, the pigments are, if you're using tubes, they are very pigmented, so you don't need much. Yeah, if you don't have tubes, you just kind of mix a bit of pigment and um, from your watercolor box and put it on, on paper. Okay, so let's start applying the color. And um, since later on we're going to use darker tones, don't mind the lines too much, you know. You, I know that we, we draw the, the outlines and stuff, but they are just important so that you know where the color is, is going later on. But uh, for this moment, uh, you can also cross the, cross the lines, don't think about the edges too much. And if you want to know how wet should the surface be, it needs to be like a glaze of water over it. So the water should not stay on the surface too much. It should not do some piles of water or just like drops. 
the droplets should not be see, not uh, not to be recognized but yeah you just want to have like a small sheen uh, like a nice mm, shine shine all over the the surface that you just apply the water mm -hmm. and then i'm going to take the the yellow and try to mix a bit of uh, magenta to it and I'm gonna start applying oh wow the oh, that's always such a good moment where we start applying color yeah oh, it's the best like, like you, it it's well. all this build up and build up and preparation and then yeah first masking tape and then yeah okay mixing colors outlines and then the first moment you put color on paper it's like ah oh, yeah now we're there true. don't you think so too I mean maybe just my maybe just my thing but I do enjoy watercolors, um, where I admit I'm a bit, um, I'm less patient as all the preparation, you have to, you know, put everything around, you know, you organize your stuff, and then you go. So, um, I do like to work with watercolors, but it's more, more I, I know Sonia is on a completely different level. Okay, so, um, I'm gonna try to do some sort of transition between gray and mm. this tone. Beautiful. And if you see that the color needs to be a bit more intense, you can still go in with, with some more yellow. Megan says it's so satisfying, so I think there are at least a couple of people who agree with me. Mm. Yeah, I like it as well. Um, I really started to appreciate watercolors around the new new year. I don't know what happened, but it was just like so nice when I figured out that water does so many interesting tricks, you know, on the paper. And especially then after it dries, it does something completely different. And I liked it so much that I said, wow, I need to learn it. So I have a question for you, all of you watching us live and also all of you um, who will watch this on replay. Is watercolor something you're trying today for the first time? Or is it something you've been doing already? And if it is something new, you know, I know some of you when they when you saw this picture, it's like, oh my God, this is gonna be really hard to do. Um, is this something that comes up often? Like you see a view and you don't dare to draw it because it's even too complex. Um, I'm interested in that because it's some of the struggles we're facing also sometimes, especially when trying something new, let's say, like watercolor. Yeah. Okay, so what you're, what I'm doing right now, I started to, to wet the other surfaces. Um, this upper part, I know here that I'm going to add some clouds later on. We can do them now and they are going to be more fluffy and uh, they will be, sorry, um, to just move the paper around uh, too much. Maybe I can also, should I just stick it on the table? Do you think it's gonna be better? No, that's fine. I will, I will move it if it goes too much out of the camera's way. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, sorry. I forgot what I was talking about. The clouds. Um, the clouds, yeah. So you, you have two ways. You can either do the clouds right now and just um, go in with the brush and add some lines for the clouds here. Maybe you can try that out so that you just see how it looks like. And I'm still gonna just uh, put some masking tape down so that I won't move my paper too much all the time. Okay. No, let's stick to the process. So I, w I was, where I was, I was wait wetting the paper. Yeah. Sorry, when I get questions in between, sometimes I'm just like, okay, okay, we can do that or that. Because it is like, it has steps, but you're still the painter, you know? You can always react accordingly. You can always do whatever you want and prefer. So even if you see me doing it, it's not like you should get frustrated about it and saying, ah, oh, you know, Sonia did this and that. Um, I'm here just to guide you, but you're the painter. So, yeah. You're the creative. Remember that. 
and we have interesting um, feedback here when I was asking about watercolors. So, um, Phil Kalade, I hope I spoke that out correctly, agreed watercolor is a great medium for experiment. Roxy says, super satisfying to watch, feels like meditating. Yeah, Roxy, I agree. Drawing and painting is a lot like meditation. It helps me, you know, deal when I'm with my anxiety, if I'm anxious, it helps me calm down, it helps me focus. I really love doing it. Like a day is saved if I can do some drawing or painting. Um, so yeah, Maria also agreeing that it's so satisfying. And um, yeah, I have been doing um, watercolors already, says Focalade. Always loved it and I love to teach and being um, and being streaming for six months. Congratulations! I love that you're passing on that knowledge. Um, this is art, not puffed. I love the nickname. It says, I use graphite only, haven't used watercolor much. I like watercolor though. So, have you, um, why haven't you been using watercolor? Is it um, something that you have a feeling it's kind of uh, overwhelming, the medium, or you just haven't gotten to it yet? And Marias says that watercolors are her favorite, but not really confident in drawing anything she likes. Sometimes seems uh, too difficult. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Yeah, I mean, um, that's why I like to do abstract paintings when using watercolors, because this is how I try to develop a feeling um, for, for the technique, you know, because I know that it's like the pancakes. There's a saying that the first one is always or for the dog. And it's the same if you ask me with drawings. You can expect from yourself yeah. that the first five um, five of them are going to be amazing. Yeah, always feed your first drawing to the dog. Yes, <laughs> that's what I was trying to communicate with you. <laughs> yeah, but um, but seriously, yeah, don't don't think about it that way. I mean, um, it's better just for me. The hardest thing is to 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 set on just one uh, one thing. For example, I would. When I when I decide that I'm gonna do watercolors in the evening, my problem or my challenge is always to decide on what I'm gonna paint. You know, it's not the question, oh, will I do it or will I make it? But it's more about what should I choose? You know, because of course everything has its own steps um, and technique, and yeah, that's my greatest challenge. For example. So I don't know if you're similar than I am, then um, then usually it's just the best sometimes to say, okay, today I'm doing this and that, and tomorrow I'm going to do something different. And usually that that works fine. Wow, it's a lot of um, a lot of feedback coming into watercolor. You know, also stuff like it is, you know, not for people who like control. It's more something you let have to let go. Um, something new for Wendy, she says, but um, it's always extremely helpful to watch how um, various subjects can be um, approached. And she's a visual learner. And this is true. For us, I would, I would say most of you watching us, all, all of you are probably visual people because you are creatives, you are artists who create visual things. So it might be your way of communicating. And drawing and painting is uh, a way you communicate not only with others but with yourself. So um, it's a good it's a good thing to remember. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, and likes watercolors as well. But it seems so complicated. All the colors plus the drawing. So she's still learning and um, thinks maybe she could learn more watercolor when she knows more drawing. Mm. I think you can. I if. And if watercolor is your thing, um, at least this is how I understand it, it there's always this fear and <laughs> intimidation from new material and it's so many, so many things to, to consider. But if you like it, it's almost, uh, I would suggest diving into it. And one good stepping stone to that is just doing some abstracts, like Sonia said which will remove the pressure of it having to look like something, but will give you the freedom um, to play and to experiment. As Gaspar said, yeah, I agree completely. 
Are you, um, tell me, are you following the steps that I'm taking or are you, are you taking your own steps? That would be very interesting to, to hear. Shilpa said she is, she just joined, but is all caught up now and is drawing with. Mm -hmm. um, Guy Shepherd said, great demonstration. Um, he's been doing uh, watercolors before and guidance um, of a teacher, but, um, but has to try this on his own. Mm, okay, yeah, that's a good way to start. Yeah. So, um, Polo asking if you also paint with gouaches. Um, well, not gouaches, but I do like to paint with acrylic paint, which is somewhat similar. And this is a small, okay, this is interesting to say. Um, I do my small acrylic paintings, I do abstract small acrylic paintings, and I don't really show them. Um, because I'm at a point where probably Anne said before, like, yeah, you know, I have to know the medium. And when Sonia said, yeah, go abstract, I also did that with uh, acrylics. And um, yeah, it's quite liberating, I must say. Doing something abstract will get you to play a bit more, I'd say. <laughs> so, Sonia, people are really liking the stream. Stefan says, one of the best streams this year. And it's already September, so... <gasps> Oof! Yes, thank you very much. I mean, we appreciate uh, the, the comments <laughs> a lot. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, I, I'm just going in with a bit darker tone. I'm gonna be brave. Um, as you see, all the time I'm holding in my hand another brush and also some paper towel. Because if I see that I don't have any control, I'm just gonna go inside, right? you know what I mean, go to the drawing and just gonna use use the paper towel, remove some water, um, yeah, and continue. So what I'm, what I'm doing right now, I'm just adding the base layer for the color, uh, for the darker parts, so that later on, even if I don't cover all the surface with the color, the color, color will still emphasize what, what the form should represent. Okay. I'm gonna do that here as well. Mm -hmm. And here as well. Okay, so, and then we have some similar color in the background for the you know, the, that outline that we were talking about, the, um, the, the landscape in the background. I think I'm gonna take the same blue color. I'm gonna try to mix it up a bit. And I'm gonna add it in the background. So I'm gonna just uh, answer a question real quick here. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I think interesting, Stinka Katza says, uh, I love watercolors, but uh, to color the sketches because they're lacking a certain edge. Mm -hmm. I would say, Stinka Katza, I would give you a challenge. Do try to do sketches only with watercolors, and you can do sharp edges. Check out what it means to do, you know, wet on dry technique, and this will yield sharp edges and play with that a little bit. I'm pretty sure you might discover a pretty interesting world of watercolors and it's also a way to sketch and they you can produce very nice crisp edges um, and really beautiful forms. So do try that. I think you might uh, you might like it. And then we have a question about interesting to see how the reflection of the of this um, island monastery is lighter or brighter than the image itself. And is this true only for mornings and evenings? Because during the day it seems it's actually darker. Um, yes, it has something to do with the reflection of the light. So basically why the reflection of the island is brighter in this image is because um, you see the whole water surface is much brighter. This is because the sun is falling in from such an angle, the light that it is actually really bright and also makes the reflection of, of, the, of the island brighter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Does that have anything to do with the with the particles that are also floating in the in the? In 
everything has to do with floating particles, <laughs> Physi <laughs> physicists say. <laughs> they always talk about some floating particles and quantum jumps and strings and particles on strings and dancing particles and... And uh... <laughs> thank you for this life lesson. <laughs> <laughs> it's a life lesson. Everything. It's <laughs> your particles, basically. <laughs> you didn't know, Sonia. I mean, yeah, come on. You're basically particles. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, um, the particle thing is. Um, that's why we have the red light. Because in the atmosphere, the lower levels of the atmosphere, there's much more dust and particles in the atmosphere. And when the sun is shining through lower levels of the atmosphere, um, only the red light gets through. Because red light is much, uh, it has a different wavelength and bypasses all the particles, whilst uh, the blue light hits them and uh, thus gets stopped. So that's why close to the horizon you always have a reddish, orangey light if the sun is shining from there. Mm. A little bit of um, physics 101. <laughs> mm. Molto interessante. Uh, someone is a someone is a physicist here. Like, you can gladly correct me if I uh, just explain something weird. But I think I think it's like that. You think or you know? I mean, you're on a on a drawing channel, Gasper. Yeah, that's why you can't I... <laughs> say everything what you think. Yeah, well, I can say a lot of. I can tell you a lot of exact, accurate things about drawing, composition, and color, but particles yeah you know take it with a grain of salt <laughs> i mean somewhere there is a line between sketching and physics well or wouldn't you say it is the line is blurry like a watercolor wash wet on wet technique <sighs> <laughs> yeah some insider joke references right here so roxy says i'm right thank you roxy that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, bending the light through the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Ah, you just um, spoke Portuguese pretty well. Muito interessante. Did you just I say muito think... interessante? I don't know. But whatever you said, it sounded Portuguese. And I channeled Portuguese. You just channeled Portu By the way, I love Portuguese language. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> But it is, okay, well, well one Portuguese reference. Um, the light that we're seeing here in this image, you know, this is the light after the sun set. There's a certain term in film used for that kind of light. And this term comes from Portuguese. I don't know why, but it's kind of stuck. And it's called Lushke Fushke. So it's this, uh, this light, this soft light after the sun has set. So um, I probably butchered the, the pronunciation, but Lushke Fushke sounds pretty awesome to me so i remembered it i don't know why awesome okay yeah over to you sonia enough of me no 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 talking. just talk talk i mean i can see you're on the roll hill here and uh i don't want to keep you i will turn my attention to the comments and uh, yeah you better explain the technical <laughs> you better stuff. explain yeah okay so what you what you're seeing right now i i'm going in again with darker tones um adding some details, uh, trying to add some color, deepen the color, deepen the shade. Um, one of the main reasons why I started doing watercolors is because we do a lot of um, sketches with just black fine liner or just black pen. And um, I think it would be very amazing if, you, if, if I would know how to, how to incorporate watercolors um, in ink drawings so that's that was my my motivation that's why I started and this is why later on I will also try to add some lines with um, with ink or with with a black pen and of course I invite you to experiment a bit and do that as well um, or or you can just continue doing doing what you're doing just applying watercolors um, I can imagine that you're having better success if you're using the watercolor paper because it can absorb much more water. That's the point. Huh? You, we're using watercolor paper because that means that we can go 
we can we can use more more layers mm -hmm. so of we water. Got just a quick question. Yeah. In the process you're doing now, we got a question. Is it called like filling in uh, the color? <laughs> do you, or do you do you have a name for the stage of the painting you're in? Well, I mean, it's it's partly glazing. Glazing means that you're applying color on top of it and for that you can also create different tones, you know, sometimes the, the, the another color just shines through um, and that's something that I'm also trying to do here in, in the background you can see that because this this was just mixture of a pines grey and blue and a bit of magenta and I created like something which is which, which is almost something brown and that's because because underneath there's there's also a ye yellow tone so um, I'm trying to achieve some sort of richness through that that I'm layering different colors on top of each other each other and if you're using the right paper the pigment sits on the paper it gets you know into the pores and you don't move it with the brush so uh, yeah that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Nice. Um, well, I will send out a heart right now mm -hmm. because we've got a donation from Anne, but not only from Anne. We've already, at the beginning of the stream, we already got a donation from Louis. So, dear Anne, dear Louis, um, you're getting a big heart from us. And that's our classical thank you heart. <laughs> Thanks for joining in. We're really grateful for the support, but most of all, we're grateful for having you and all of the rest of the community around. It feels like you're kind of, you know, our, you know, like I know we we had followers for a long time, but now we really have a feeling you're the first ones who came to talk to us, who, you know, interacted with us and... First explorers. Yeah, it's it, it feels great um, to have you on this creative journey. So thanks a lot. And everyone, you can totally support us um, this time by giving a thumbs up to the video. And yeah, this will help it get out um, to the world more. And if you're not subscribed, it's a good idea to subscribe. Um, and then you ring that bell and then you will really feel good about it. I guarantee you click the subscribe and you ring the bell and your day will be amazing. Yeah, you somehow ask yourself, what did I do today for myself? Like, really something for myself. Like today I subscribed to Lionscapes. And then you think to yourself, yes, you know, finally. I deserve now an ice cream. I just subscribed to Lionscapes, now I deserve an ice cream. Yeah. You know, it's like going for a long jog. It's the equivalent, basically. Um, okay. How do you manage to avoid having layers of same colors? Only solution is to use wet on wet option, asks <laughs> Emmanuel. Layers of same colors. Yeah, okay. Um, mm, okay, how can I explain that? Because I'm not sure if I interpret the question right. Yeah, so Emmanuel, what do you exactly mean by that? Um, um, first of all, if you want, even with one color, you can achieve great things. For example, you can do an amazing monochromatic painting with just one color, basically. Um, and the, the trick is that you really work more with water than with, than with paint. So you start adding more color and more color. You're really paying attention to the paint. So it's really all about the feeling. You need to be Sensi sensible, uh, sensitive to the color and how much you're using um, and also for example you need to pay attention that the, the layers in between are drying before applying different ones. This is a good, good point, right? You have to be a bit patient. Yeah, you need to be patient. So at the beginning I was like very fast and started doing everything and you know just starting adding the first layers um, but later on your work gets very slow and you can really take your time uh, creating and painting so yeah it's a really a nice sort of meditation 
especially if you're talking with Lionscape's crew, you know, telling us about your day and all the all the things you did, your struggles while painting, your fears. You can all you you can entrust everything to us, you know. Do it. <laughs> We had an interesting insight from Jeffrey, um, who says, uh, I love watercolors because of the transparency and the thought process of painting negatively, but mm. also planning your painting. Yeah. And painting from light to dark into the darkest colors. Um, yeah. This is a special, watercolors are a special kind of painting. You have to think before you paint. Is it, would, that, would you say that's true, Sonia? Yes, that's true. That's definitely true. Um, and you discover that pretty quickly. Um, and it's very nice if you have someone who, who tells you about those things. You know, like, okay, so first we're gonna do this and that because blah, 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 blah. And then all the additional steps. They are so, these steps are so important if you want to, if you want to do the, a nice drawing, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, but sooner or later, even without instruction, you, you figure out that you need some sort of guidance. You need to have like a structure because the, of course, if you start with darker colors, they will never become lighter. So you know that you need to start with light tones and lighter colors and then adding some, some deeper ones and stuff like that. Um, yep. And it's also, I would say, there are different techniques that kind of maybe even reflect your character, right? Um, some of you said or you like, you know, clear lines, crisp lines. Maybe you like <laughs> someone who likes to sketch uh, with a marker. Um, while, you know, some of you like watercolor. And it's, you know, you know, the preferences are totally different. But it also has something to do with, like, are you patient enough to do that? You know, can you really, someone says, with watercolors, you have to let go. It's an interesting uh, analogy. And I think it's a bit true. Sometimes you're surprised by the results in watercolors. And you don't have all the control. Yeah. And sometimes I, I also know that I'm not always patient enough to to do watercolors. You know, there are days when... If, if I'm, for example, if I need to calm down, then watercolors are amazing. If I want to express my feelings, like if you have like certain emotions, like frustration or something, then I prefer to use something like colored pencils because I can be re really rough, you know, and then, then I can express myself a bit easier. So when we're talking about expression and how to express ourselves, it's really a tool. Drawing is a tool and you can take whatever you want and use it as, as a tool for expression. So that means sometimes it's going to be watercolors, the next day it's going to be colored pencils and yeah, sometimes that's just going to be outline of, or, of something. An important thing is, I would think, I would say that you do something. Because all of you who are here, I can already tell you that you are creative people who are interested in that and if you want to be satisfied in life you will always have the need to express yourself creatively so it's a good idea to have an array and um, you know sometimes you have one thing you like to do but it's sometimes a good idea to have some different options to express yourself when you're not feeling like doing one you can just jump to the other and this is what helped us a lot when we did this creative corner you see behind us we have all the different materials and all the different stuff and we just, you know, pick watercolors at one moment and then, you know, we do some classic sketching that we, we've been doing for years and we really enjoy and then we do some abstract stuff um, on the side when we feel like it. So it's a good idea to have several options of creative outlets. Yeah, that also makes it fun. And um, of course, it's... It it's the question, what, what are you painting for? What's, what's the reason behind your expression? If you're a professional, then you're doing it probably with a, you know, with a different intention as someone that does it for hobby. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and that means that the approach and the method can be also different. Because if you do it for hobby, then you can take maybe a bit more time. Um, there's, there's probably a bit less negative talk mm -hmm. going on while the professional always needs to consider that he needs to deliver some sort of achievement or result. And this is an interesting question. I would, would interest me why do you paint or draw or sketch? Is it because it helps you in a certain way? Is it uh, like you like doing it or do you do it professionally? Does it help you in your professional um, career? I'm interested in that because it's uh, for us it has many roles and drawing and sketching really has many roles and um, I'd love to hear what it means to you. Yeah. Yeah, that would be amazing to hear. Oh wow, Sonia and sets and there's the reflection. Sonia is a magician. Kaboom. I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so then I saw once a trick like you just pull it up or down. Wait a second. <gasps> no. Oh no. Let's try to correct it. Maybe I can still remove this this plotch. But you see the lines, they are like they're vertical lines that they are making. And I'm trying to think about how to how to do those lines. Because I see that they're like they go once they go up and sometimes they go like Wow like so this is amazing. Yeah, and um, it's it's just playing with the stuff you have. It's like if you if you like to repair your own apartment or furniture, or you know, if you're like a do-it-yourself kind of person, you know that sometimes you really need to be creative because you you don't have stores which are open 24/7, right? So sometimes on the weekend, on Sunday, when something breaks, you just need to improvise. And this is also what I try to do constantly. I always just think about what can I do? What does that mean? Can I achieve something differently? And it's more about, it's an ex experiment. Mm -hmm. You just try to look at it as it is. It's fun. And um, also speaking about what it is, you know, drawing, what it means to people. Rego says, uh, making art makes me happy. Um, that's definitely a good reason to do it. If you enjoy it, you should totally go for it and do as much as you can. And Maria says, I do it because it's relaxing and always wonderful making new artworks. Oh yeah, so you also, it seems like you do it like we do, it's like a creative exploration. It's fun to do new stuff, you're surprised by it, you're um, sometimes you're disappointed, but that's the part of the of the creative journey. And yeah, but definitely most of the time it's relaxing. Roxy says, I paint as a hobby and I forget everything in life and what's going on and, and all the worries. Mm. So this is beautiful. That's very beautiful. This is something we get a lot. And we hear people say that, you know, they do it because it's just like focus on this one thing and everything else disappears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. And that's, that's really nice. Just to know that you have this possibility because um, I, and then in addition to that, if I draw and then listen to some music, for example, I'm just, I'm just some, somewhere else. I mean, usually I don't, don't don't listen to any any radio or something something that would that would fill my thoughts. Um, but I'm very good when when I listen to music. Then I just go somewhere, and that's so beautiful. And also, Roxy says a beautiful thing here um, in the live chat. Um, develop my way of thinking, and I let go of perfectionism. Mm. This is beautiful. If you are able to let go of your perfectionism, it's interesting. Are any other, as anyone else, having issues with their perfectionism? Um, it's definitely something 
I had to overcome because you know saying I'm a perfectionist first maybe sounds good but it's actually can be very limiting uh, in many things so um, drawing and doing something that forces you to let go a bit like watercolors is a great cure against that Okay, so I think right now, how does it look like? It okay. looks amazing, Sonia. I'm gonna go inside. Maybe before I add the, the background, I can also add some clouds. Okay, let's add some clouds. And then when the clouds are drying, I'm gonna add the, a bit more depth for the, for, to the city. And yeah, then we're gonna look if I can do something more with my pen how much time do we have okay i think we're we slowly need to to finish right i mean yeah, Dash, also... you're so you're also um so friendly and just letting us paint but oh yeah i'm letting you paint definitely because i'm enjoying it but we're also looking forward to tell you about our announcement mm. um and we're excited to do that because we feel that um, we feel that we want we feel that we're doing our best to bring you value, but now also doing a new step to you know bring you even more. So we're excited to share that with you. And yeah, Jeffrey says I paint because I want to capture a moment that I see or feel. Then I love to come back to them over and over again. Sometimes it's all about the colors I used that are the most pleasing to me. Mm. Beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. I would describe it the same, actually. Beautiful. Very nice. And Guy says, it helps me to relax and to keep focused. I mainly paint with oil on canvas and to feed my creativity and imagination. It is the perfect gift because you did put a lot of positive energy into it. And Emmanuel says, it allows me to create something with no judgment for myself or others. Wow, right. you guys are amazing. This is amazing. These are some amazing insights. Yeah. Oh, this is perfect. I love that you see creating this way. Yeah. Wow. We should have uh, watercolors discussions more often. I think this is like nice. Very, very nice. Yeah. And I also love seeing that you're using different mediums, you know, not watercolors, not just sketching, but also oils, graphite, uh, different stuff, but with the same intent, the intent of um, what I'm hearing mostly is you know relaxation focus um also overcoming some personal barriers like perfectionism and creating something new it's mostly fun so awesome to hear that thanks for sharing yeah okay so these are my clouds like this Okay. Mm. Just one small step, Kasper. Okay, I think I'm gonna try to just to deepen the city a bit and then I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this outline is a bit stronger. I'm just gonna try to the outer part a bit darker mm -hmm. and then some parts not everyone every all the whole surface because I see there are some parts that are just popping out and I will try to do those a bit stronger yes. mm -hmm. we also incorporate some highlights in there um i would if i would have have like a white paint or something mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so that i could mix like a nice pastel orangey mm -hmm. tone that that's here mm -hmm. um, but right now i think what i can do is just deepen the tones mm -hmm. or the color that i'm using right now so yeah let's see how this works at the end so 
um, you probably have a bit more space so you can really go near to, to your painting and just try to add the details or just take your time especially with with small details that you would like to emphasize um, I'm noticing that you know if, if I would draw without a camera I would probably take a bit more time and just um, yeah explore a bit more you know just take my time and use a bit finer brush um, smaller lines and for that I would probably get better outline on some things um, you can do also nicer nicer um, details beautiful I love how you made you know the first layer was just very soft and you know flowing into the colors were flowing into each other but then you added this crisp layer and it really makes the the, the painting come to life oh, thanks yeah so people are loving what you're doing <laughs> Stefan says only 41 viewers and only 24 likes. Yeah, people, we really appreciate if you gave us a like. That really helps us and helps the video, you know, be visible by the YouTube algorithm and, you know, the masterminds behind that. Uh, who knows? You know, um, apparently it helps. <laughs> um, and it makes us happy. This is true. <laughs> This is true. It actually is. You know what makes us really happy? It really makes us... It's great to hear your feedback and your comments. Yeah, somehow comments are the, the best part, you know, because this is how you measure your success. Usually. I mean, very often. If mm. you want to have, have, like, an honest opinion, then you then you look at the comments. If, you, if you're searching for the constructive criticism, right? Ah. So, oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is where we leave us feedback and we always appreciate your feedback like and all the suggestions for improvement. By the way, speaking of that, Sonia, the technical mastermind behind these live streams, has incorporated some music in the background today. I'm just interested in a little feedback. Do you hear the music or do you not hear I the music? I think you didn't. Ah, it's here. Okay. And mm -hmm. because someone, Eleonora, said, do we have music in the background? And she was the only one who asked, so I don't know if it's um, if you can hear it, just say yes if you can, um, and if you like it. I mean, it's the first time us trying some musical background. Maybe if it's too too quiet, you can also say, and we're gonna adjust it for a moment or two. That would also be interesting. Well, some people hear it, some people don't, um, and some people are loving it. Interesting. Maybe it's so quiet that it doesn't. Um, come up on all speakers okay so what I'm gonna do now is just what I would usually do so I would I will go in and try to add some lines for example here a crisp line or I'm gonna do some textures in that part so just not too much but I'm gonna try to emphasize some points let's see how that looks at the end All right, so the music is definitely subtle and uh, yeah, it appears that the, the, the volume is, is just right. Ah, oh, okay. Well, that was the point. Also, um, that's why I selected, I actually prepared everything for the last, last week's live stream uh, because last week we should do watercolors, but then because of the technical reasons, I didn't get all the cameras. That I would need to have like a good quality live stream. Um, I didn't do that, but I also searched for on 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 internet how to incorporate music so that I can uh, make this experience even a bit better for you. And yeah, if you don't hear it, then I'm sorry, but it was meant with good intention. <laughs> Okay, like this. Okay, let's try to add some lines. 
looks beautiful. I love the small crisp details you put up front because it gives additional depth to the image because we have the feeling that you know we see all the details mm -hmm. that are close to us. It really helps if you add some more detailed stuff in the first layer of your of your image or drawing or painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it really makes does something, right? I mean, it's it really gives you the feeling that um, that you're there, yeah. like that you're staying in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That you're uh, standing in the foreground. Yeah. Okay. Wow, beautiful, Sonia. So this is one part. Let's try to add just a few stones here. So I really try to emphasize on the details in the foreground and then just guide the eye Maybe to some outline in the back as well. This. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Chilla has a nice insight. Watercolors are a good visual aid for how I'm my own worst critic. Usually other people don't notice every little mistake I've made. Yes, this is true. Um, we usually are our own worst critic. And especially as creatives, we have this, and as visual people, we have this high standards for things looking good. Because even if our skill is not there yet, we know, we've seen other works, we've seen other people do it, we know what is good and we can judge our own work uh, and compare it to others' work. And we're not immune to that. You know, we constantly compare ourselves to people who are way better than us and way more skilled. So we're constantly in this perception gap. And yeah, it's a struggle. And until our skills, you know, match our expectations, it's gonna be a struggle. So it's best to, you know, the only way to do that is stop comparing yourself to others, but just trying to trace your own progress. True. Yeah, there's a lot of what can be said around that topic, right? Um, and we will for sure in the future months talk about this topic because it's very interesting. Um, usually we think it's just about how can I improve my skill, but usually through that, when you use when you learn something new, it's not just about the technical skill that, that you gain, that you get. It's always about something more, right? You always have that kind of epiphany or something and through that you learn something, maybe to enjoy the process or just not to be so harsh on yourself. It's very interesting what kind of discussion are we having today. This is, this is sometimes totally different when we're doing Creative Monday and doing creative exercises. Sometimes we don't talk about relaxation or, you know, how to how to observe. It's usually something more about, you know, different kind of self talk, talk that we're having, talk that we're having. So, um, yeah, it's very interesting just to to listen and to read all your comments. Yeah. Okay. So now I I went in in because if I added here some details, I decided then at the end I'm gonna do them in the background as well, and I'm just gonna try to add some spots, some points that are gonna hold everything together. So some dark spots, right? Yeah. Or maybe just you know here where where the the dark outline meets the clouds. I'm just gonna make sure that the line is crisp. Like this makes the the silhouette pop out from the background right right yeah okay and I think this is also the point where I will just wow finish my sketch. beautiful this looks amazing Sonia thank you yeah so I'll just blend out the image real quick so we can see even more of what you did like in its full splendor. So this is my creative mess. <laughs> you know, it's just this is this is why I love to use just a plate because it gives me a lot of space to mix color, 
especially when I'm testing colors like yellow, magenta, magenta and cyan, I, I did mainly all my colors with those, those three tones. And that means that, um, that then you need to experiment and use pigments and stuff. So plate is always a very good thing to have. People love it. And when he says, I'll pretend the ominous bunny is stalking us from afar inside the castle. Ah, ah. yes. So for those of you who know what the ominous bunny is, congratulations. You've been around on this channel for a while. For those of you who are new to the concept of the ominous bunny, stay tuned and stick around this channel because the ominous bunny will show up in random locations, in random times and surprise us. Or you can also watch our old uh, live streams where the ominous bunny already made itself present. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So definitely a uh, video to check out is um, our live stream on composition. And I think it's one of those when you can really learn a lot from just, um, you know, watching one video. It was very succinct, was packed with information. Yeah, true. Yeah. True. Okay. Oh, the removing of the washi tape is like yeah. a ritual. And if you see, I'm very, very cautious. I'm very slow. Um, because I really don't want to damage the page. I mean, I did some lines here before, but still I can remove this. But if I now damage the, the paper, that's something that you just can't <laughs> can't fix, right? Whenever you damage the paper, a bunny dies, so... Oof, <laughs> we don't want that. So be cautious now while, while you're using the the masking tape and removing it. And if you used a duct tape, then good luck removing that from the table. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Awesome! I love it, This really. is the end result. Amazing. For a hour live stream, this is a very decent work. It is beautiful. And um, I guess it's also... Um, you packed it with a lot of information and I love it about today's live stream that actually um, we didn't just talk about painting with watercolors but we talked about other issues as well that came up mm -hmm. and it is something that we want to bring you as well in the future even more so even more value because for the last half a year now this is the announcement so you've made it through bam yeah so, Sonia, last half a year was really insane for us, right? Yeah, as it was for you, probably. Yeah, it is, uh, it's been a crazy time. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we started these live streams because we wanted to contribute to everyone who's searching for some kind of refuge in hard times, in a way of creative expression. Um, and we knew that we have a platform and that we can give you that. And we were surprised how many of you showed up and it was amazing. We never knew before that we have a community of Lionscapers, all of you who kept showing up, all of you who also, you know, even finding us for the first time, showing up here and talking with us. It also helped us get through the whole Corona lockdown time. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So now we've been thinking how to bring even more value to you. And we know that a way to do that is to give you, first of all, step one, more packed information, very succinct, very condensed videos, which are pre-produced. Yeah. Something we used to do a lot more before, right? Yeah, yeah, we did. But, uh, you know, this live stream part was, uh, how, how would you put it? It was almost like an excuse not to do the other videos, not to do the produced kind of, you know, edited videos because yeah. we were like, ah, we did a live stream. But we know you deserve it. We also do these um, compact videos with information and we want to yeah. give you uh, like a, a library with, that you can always add, um, access and not have to go through one and a half hours of live stream and, you know, just get like five tips and steps on how to improve in a certain part yeah. of your creative skill. Yeah. Okay, what else? Then we have step two. The step two? What's yeah. the step two? The step two. The step two is something that we've been preparing now for weeks. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we want to... It's something that we know 
will help you on your creative journey. Um, so all we'll say right now today is that mark October, twenty no September twenty fourth, where we'll announce what it is. Yeah. And um, you will gonna be our dear community here, um, one of the first ones to you know hear about it and um, hopefully get some value from it. So um, September twenty fourth, we're working on that. Yeah. So um, but that also means that that. We probably won't do live stream so often anymore because we would really like to focus on producing like, you know, condensed content because we're very good at that. Just getting to the point, just making everything condensed and giving it in a way that it's easy to understand. So we created a lot of content in the last months and we need to put that in smaller chunks. So you can always have it there, you know, whenever you need it. Yeah, and also there's going to be a lot of new information coming in. Yeah. We've been diving recently into creativity, into artist struggles, into all this stuff we've been talking also about today, like, you know, <laughs> relaxation and how this can help you focus, how it activates your right brain side. And we think there's so many benefits to creating, drawing, painting um, that you as creatives can, uh, you know, can benefit from mm -hmm. and uh, should know about and we'll be bringing you this information as well. Yeah. So, September 24th, can't wait to hear what it is. Yeah, stay tuned on YouTube, mm -hmm. stay tuned on Instagram. Uh, please do join Lionscapers Facebook group where you can post this awesome uh, painting that you did today. I mean, I don't know if you, if you know, but we have like a Lionscapes group which was resting for for quite a bit now uh, I have I'm having also a few technical troubles there I can't open your photos anymore so I need to contact Facebook support so that they can um, a bit yeah uh, advise me on how to do that but yeah still join the group post some photos in so that we can see what you did yeah it's called Lionscapers it's in the description thank you for being here live Thank you for watching. If you watch this on replay, you know, tell us how you liked it in the comments. And yeah, you know what to do. Keep on drawing. And stay creative, everybody. Bye-bye.